<laughs> Tess, I'm at Bayes towards the bottom. Ramesha says over here in person that they seem to hear me. <laughs> okay, my father's in Israel. It's, it's going to be a tough one. Okay. So, um, Neitea means to plant. And Mavrich means to layer. Vechara Markiv is to graft. Now, grafting doesn't have to be forbidden. If it's different trees, it's forbidden, but it's not necessarily forbidden. Now, if it's Erev Shvius, it's the year before the Shemitah. Shleishim Yayim Lefnei Rosh Hashanah. We're mixing in a lot of halachas together. We're looking for laws of Arla. We're looking for Shemitah laws. It's like getting everything is getting mixed. So, and it's 30 days before Rosh Hashanah. So also Leishana, that's going to count for a complete year. When Rosh Hashanah arrives, you're going to be in your second year. Again, you planted it. Rosh Chodesh El. It's going to be in its second year already for Arla on Rosh Hashanah. Does this mean a minimum of 30 days? Yeah. It's not going to work. It doesn't count. Yeah. We're about to say Pachis. We'll say in a minute. And you can also keep these fruits. For, you can uh, let it continue growing for Shvius because we, we had something called, we learned, we introduced this yesterday. It was called Tesefes Shvius. You had to add on to the Shemitah. We learned Mesif and Michal Alakadesh. Now, yesterday I was concerned that it seemed from Mishnayas and Shvius that it's, it's really rabbinic. It's not biblical. But yesterday we were learning that it's biblical. So I, I noticed just what Taisus was saying, that it seems that there's different laws of Tisef Shvius. Some of them have to do with grain and some of them have to do with trees. So probably the trees would be rabbinic and the grain, the planting of the grain would be, uh, would be biblical, um, that you have to add to the, to the Shemitah. Now what we're saying is that if you plant too close to the Shemitah, then it's considered, then it's, you plant it in Tisef uh, Shvius, and that's that's not allowed. You weren't allowed to plant Tisef Shvius, and it would be forbidden. But over here, you planted 30 days before, it's fine. So we mix two laws together. We're, we're giving you two laws over here an Arla law, we're giving you a Shemitah law. And 30 days before, uh, Shemitah covers both. If it's less than 30 days before Rosh Hashanah, then that's not considered a full year when Rosh Hashanah comes. And then you can't keep it on Shvius because you planted in Tesef Shvius. Sabbatical, yeah. Erla is the first three years of a tree, the fruit is forbidden. And it doesn't become permitted after three years. The tree becomes permitted after three years. And the fruit remains forbidden forever. Oh, it doesn't go to the Kayan. And the fourth year, it goes to the Kayan. In other words, those original fruits stay forbidden. And then the new fruits from the tree will become permissible after the third year. The fourth year, you take it to, not to the Kohen, you take it to Yerushalayim. It's called Revai. And then the fifth year, it's uh, permissible. Are you allowed to um, pick fruits from the tree during the first three years? and? And not eat them, or you're just you have you to uh, you have to burn them actually. Arla is nisrafim, yeah, which means the ashes are permissible. <laughs> Some details there, but usually I think they just let them drop. I don't know, but then that would fertilize. The ashes also fertilize, but the ashes would be permissible. Why is it You'll see in a moment too, Bishvat. Yeah, yeah, that's the confusing part over here. Is how, how, but how does two Bishvat come in? Yeah. So far, we're seeing that Rosh Hashanah is the, is the is, okay, let's see. Uperis Natiyazu, you ready? We're on top of Dafyud. In the fruits of this planting, Asurin Ad Tesfav Bishvat, Imla Arla Arla, Imla Ravai Ravai. Yeah, now I'm not sure, and it could be there's a machlaikas about this. I'm not sure if, but, but, let me say what it says and then I'll tell you the question. <laughs> So we had 30 days before Rosh Hashanah. That was considered year one. It was a fast year. Then we have another full year, 12 months. So a total of 13 months. Then we have, okay, now we're in our, we, we finished our second, we're starting our third. 
Now we have one more year, 12 months. So basically in 25 months, you had three years. So that says, but one second, the fruits after 25 months, after Rosh Hashanah, the second Rosh Hashanah, um, the third Rosh Hashanah, the third Rosh Hashanah, after the third Rosh Hashanah, are still not permissible to eat. And those, the fruits that are, that are still um, blossoming, budding, that are still budding at that time are forbidden. You have to wait until Tu B'Shvat. Only the fruits that bud after Tu B'Shvat would be permissible. So it's not really that 25 months, it's really 25 months and then you wait till Tu B'Shvat, which is Tishri, Cheshvan, Kislev, Tevis, Shvat, another five months. Yeah. Yeah. Are we going to discuss that also? Well, very good. You're on the ball. You had a coffee already? Yes. Good. Very good. Very good. So um, now my, my, what my question is, I'm not sure if this is only because I didn't have a solid year the first year that I have to wait till Tu Bishvat. Because that's what, it, that, from the text, it looks like it's writing that. Would it change if I had a solid year before, or is it not, or is it not? No, is there is is the two bishvat coming in because I didn't comp I didn't have a solid first year I just had a one month of the year I don't know if there's notes anyone has like art scroll notes and see what what the meaning a pairs in the tiazua sir not two bishvat is that associated with the um with the lack of the of the complete year I understand so it's not like oh Thirty days is considered a year. Uh -huh. What if the previous year you actually had a two-week So was it a complete? Year? Oh yeah. So that then yeah, then that would be confusing. If if it if it's not a complete year, in other words, <laughs> the thirty days that I'm suggesting may be the problem. What if it's sixty days, ninety days, six months? At what point does the problem go away? Does it need to be a totally 12 months for the problem to go? Okay, so that's why Avram Nassim says it doesn't matter. You have to wait till Tu B'Shvat. Okay. Imla Arla Arla, Imla Ravai La Ravai. That means if it's the third year, oh, do you have a comment in there? Does it, yeah. Do they mention anything about my question? Uh, there's some more focus on whether or not really Tu B'Shvat is the, the day where you could actually yeah. start. And what does it depend, what is it? Um, among those who say that one need not wait until Tu B'Shvat in cases where the tree was planted more than 30 days before Rosh Hashanah, some hold that the years are determined by the date of planting, while others are of the opinion that the years are counted from the first of Tishrei. All agree with regard to any trees planted between the 15th of Shvat and the 15th of Av that the year ends. It's long, so oh, long. so what's happening here is that the, the, it turns out there's a machlaikas. So what is there? There's a machlaikas about this. Yeah. And anything that's planted, it, we're throwing in one more detail here that's going to confuse us until until we get to the next page. But um, if it was planted before the two vishvat before in the first year, before the two vishvat of the first year, then that would be accepted as a complete year. If it's after the two bishvat, then that machlekes, if that goes into the category, uh, if that is a, if that's considered a, a full year, and I don't need to wait, uh, uh, and, and I and I have to wait till two bishvat the yeah. following year. Okay. Okay. Uh, there's something in our school. I don't know if it was mentioned that the tree goes from being a sapling, uh, an etia, to an elan. Okay. And because of that, that's why you go by two bishvat now. Oh, really? Like a, like a transformation. Uh -huh. No, no one said anything about that. So one second. So um, what, what is the significance of, the, of a Natiya to an Elon? What is the significance? That an, el an Elon makes it that it's not Arla anymore? Uh, Elon makes it that it's now subject to the rules of 
fruits and two bishvat of uh -huh. okay. much. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I'm just discussing if that if that's significant only because of an incomplete first year. That was my uh, what I was bringing up, and it's apparently it's a machlekes. Danny was saying that um, there's an etia, which means a sampling, and then there's an elan, which is a tree, and the it's there's a tr it it uh, it transitions transforms from a an etia to an elan after two bishvat. Like a bar mitzvah. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> you know, honey, Mili, the Gemara asks, where do you know that Tu Bishvat is the significant day? We're not going to really get Tu Bishvat over here. We're going to get, how do we know that it continues past Tishrei? Amar Abchia Baraba, Amar Rabbi Yechanan. Rabchia Baraba, says the name of Rabbi Yechanan. Rabbi Barab was in the, probably the main student of Rabbi Yechanan. He reviewed everything in the name of Rabbi Yechanan. Every, he, he reviewed it every 30 days. Rabbi Yechanan corrected him. He's the big uh, Talmud of Rabbi Yechanan. And some say that this even reached Rabbi Yechanan. Rabbi Yechanan was the teacher of Rabbi Yechanan. Some say that it precedes Rabbi Yechanan. Omar Kara says in the Pasuk, Bashana Raviyas and Bashana Chamishas. Very interesting limud. If you ignore the 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 saif pasuk, if you ignore the end of the uh, the periods at the end of the sentences, so what it would say is um, the pasuk about uh, Arla says when you come into the land and you plant a fruit tree, it's forbidden for three years. It's forbidden for God. It's arelim uh, yilachem. I'm sorry, shalishanim uh, yilachem arelim lo yiyachel. And then the Pasuk, the following Pasuk says, and in the fourth year, then all the fruits will be sanctified uh, for praises for, for God. Okay. Now, if you ignore the Saif Pasuk and you read, and on the fourth year, and then you put the period there. So <laughs> that means that it's going to be forbidden for three years, plus... An additional, An additional for in the in the fourth year also. And the same as if you continue the Pasuk, that Pasuk, it says, <laughs> then there's a safe Pasuk. If you ignore that, it says, <laughs> but if you, you would say, <laughs> and in the fifth year. So what you, you would end up having is that the Arla continues into the fourth year. And the Revai, which is the laws of the fourth year, which you have to take to Yerushalayim, you redeem it, it's similar to Maishasheni, that would continue into the fifth year. Yeah, that's why the punctuation is so important. <laughs> no, no, this is a limit with the ignoring all um, trap all and, rules. yeah. So, Pamim Sheba Revias, the problem is it's the Vav. The Vav at the beginning of the word tells me and, um, that means it's like a continuation from before. Yeah. It's either Rabbi Yechanan or Rabbi Yanai. Yeah. I didn't know that. There was, yeah, 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 it was Shmita. It was Shmita. I don't think it was Rabbiana because it's in the Mishnah, and Rabbiana is in the Mira. Um, it was a Mishnah. The Mishnah says that they're allowed to do, it's in the fourth or fifth parak over there. It says that we're allowed to do certain work on Shmita just because of the tax, because it was be really impossible to survive. And they, they, they let certain things pass. I think it was a Mishnah. I don't think it was a um, Namaira. Yeah. Yeah, very interesting. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, the big controversy, the Shemitah controversy, is um, if you're allowed to sell the land in Israel to a non-Jew, like a like a Mechiras Hametz, and then um, 
and then then work it because the non-Jew doesn't own it. So they they um, certain rabbis allowed it, and other rabbis said you can't sell land in Israel to a non-Jew. And you're creating another problem. And um, then some said, well, it doesn't even work. Um, but then the question was, is it really a sale regarding like selling land or is it just the sale? So it's a huge, it was a huge controversy and it like affected like, what's, what does Israel mean? You know, it was like Rav Cook and Radar Sameach, it was like a big, uh, okay. No, it's Rabbi Yechanan, Nafcha. Yeah, right, right. It's Rabbi Yechanan, not my Rabbi Dilling. Okay, Pam Shachamishis, Vadayin Asur Mishim Revai. We said sometimes it could be the fourth year, Vadayin Asur Mishim Marla, Pam Shachamishis, Vadayin Asur Mishim Revai. What we're seeing here is that it continues past Tishrei, and it goes until Tu B'Shvat. That's what we're learning from this Pasuk. Now the Gemara asks, Lema Deleke Rab Meir. When did you need to plant it in order for it to be a solid year? In order for it to be considered a halachic year? 30 days. This doesn't seem like this is going to fit with the statement of Reb Meir, which is no problem. It could be anyone. It's a brisa. But that's what we're suggesting right now. The Reb Meir, because if it would be Reb Meir, Reb Meir says it would only need to be one day. You follow? 29th of Elul should be enough. The tiny was taught in a brisa. And you get some interesting uh, translations over here of the animals. It says, par amar batarastam. When the Torah says that you have to bring a, a bull, a par. It needs to be 24 months old plus a day, which means that a bull needs to be in the third year. And what's considered the third year? One day. One day could be a year. Once you pass the birthday, you're already in you're already in the third year. In the third year. Right. Two years plus a day is already the, the third year. Rebbe Lazar says, He says it's not one day. It needs to be 24 months. That means two years plus 30 days. Okay, so we're just, we have a machlekes, what's considered a year. He starts saying, I'm saying, well, 30 days. <laughs> uh, Mesh is suggesting that the capital Tzilam, according to Rebbe Lazi, you have to wait 30 days before you start saying the new one. Yeah. <laughs> That's cute. Okay. Now, Shahir Rebbe Meir, because Rebbe Meir would say, anytime the Torah says the word Egel, Ben Shana, that means it's within its first year. Ben Bakar is Ben Shtayim, is two years. And Ben Shal, uh, Par is Ben Shalish. So we have translations of the cow family. There's the calf, there's the Ben Bakar, which I don't know how that's translated, I guess cattle. And then a par, which is a bull, is three years. So there's three, two, and one. Okay, so that's our question. Our question is, it doesn't seem like it could be Reb Meir because Reb Meir says that one day would have been enough. Reb says, I feel the Reb Meir could really be Reb Meir. Kikama Reb Meir, Yaimechad Bashana. When does Reb Meir say that one day is enough? Yaimechad Bashana Chashav Shana, that's Besaif Shana. That's at the end of the year. Aval Betchila Shana Loi. Not at the beginning of the year. You see, you have to adjust the words over here. Besaif shanim, it should really say. The like Rashi's gear says better. To go on. Kikamar of me yemechad b'shana chashav shana besaif shanim. That's Rashi's gear. So it's better like that. It, it, the last, the last year could be one day, but you're looking for the first year. To be one day that we don't say that's the Gemara's answer the first year needs to be 30 days now starting off you need to have at least a month in the last year then it's already uh one day it would have been a year yeah 
yeah it's like high school or something or college the first year has to be like intense and then you just finish off your last lectures and you're done <laughs> anything that grows in the fourth year no no no, no. we're not talking about the years of shemitah years we're talking about the age of the tree yeah so no it was planted in the first year you see i'm looking at the age of the tree itself i'm looking at the age of the tree and i have the, it's its age is one year look at the rings <laughs> okay yeah i cut the tree can they look at through the tree at you now can they see the rings nowadays okay um I'm a Rava. Rava says, I have a problem with the statement that you just made. It says, Isn't it a Kalvachimer? If you count the last year as a day, then the first year should for sure be counted as a day. A, a day should be a year. Why? It's a very interesting analogy. It says like this. We're not talking about the Nida today. We're talking about a Nida in pre Mishnaic times, in the biblical times. You like that word? The, and, uh, the way it would work is that a woman would see blood, she would be tummy for seven days. Now, the way I counted those seven days, and then she would go to the mikveh. The way I counted it is let's say she sees blood on Sunday. Any time on Sunday, whether it's Moitzi Shabbos, which means Sunday, or whether it's Sunday afternoon, right before sundown, that's day one. And then she goes to the mikveh, Moitzi Shabbos, immediately after, after nightfall. Right. Okay. Now, the last day, that Shabbos, not because nothing to do with Shabbos, she can't go to the mikveh by day, even if it would be a Wednesday from, you know, she can't go to the mikveh by day. She has to wait till the end of the day. And then she goes to the mikvah. So the end of the day needs to be, the end of the need there needs to be a solid day. It can't be a partial day. But the first day, day one, could have been a partial day. Why? Because I count day one. When is day two? On, right away on Monday. So even if it was, it was Sunday afternoon, that's still considered day one. So if you say, it, it, what we were trying to suggest is that the last day is more lenient. The first day needs to be, uh, needs to be more strict. We're saying it's the opposite. The first day is more lenient. It could be a partial day. And the last day needs to be full. So if that's the case, then the first year should be really only one day, should be a year. And the end of the year should be either a solid year or at least 30 days. And it's the opposite of what we're suggesting here. So the way it's put in over here is just as it, whereas for Anida, that the beginning day counts for a complete day, but the last day, needs to be complete. I guess that's that. that, that, that. Oh, so it goes like this. The morning doesn't count at the end of the week, but but the evening counts at the beginning of the week, but she has to wait a week. Right? So then, if a one day counts in the last year, so shouldn't one day count for the first year? So we have a question on why that the mission is not Reb Meir. And we tried to answer, the, the Bryce is not Reb Meir, tried to answer that there's a difference between the first year and the third year, but that's not a good answer. Ve'elamai, so what are you trying to suggest? Rabbi Eliezer, it's Rabbi Lazar. Rabbi Lazar says that it takes 30 days for it to be a year. You want to say it's Rabbi Lazar? Shleishim v'shleishim boy. Then you need 30 plus 30, which is a total of 60. Now, we're introducing something that we've been ignoring the whole time. And what we're going to introduce is that it takes time for the seed that's planted to take root. And that takes 30 days. So 
it's only after 30 days that you would start counting the 30 days because it didn't take root yet. Yeah. So there would be a problem if you planted it less than 30 day, less than 60 days before, then it would be taking root within 30 days of, of uh, Tosefes. Yeah, there's a whole discussion. Very interesting, Machlegas on Shabbos. If someone plants a seed on Shabbos, it sounds like he committed the biblical uh, violation of planting. But if it takes three days to take root, then he's really only planting on, on uh, Shabbos Sunday, Monday. He really only planted it on Monday. Then the question is, if he goes after Shabbos and takes it out, um, did he stop the prohibition because it never took root? Yeah. And there would be no problem to plant it on Thursday and it would take root on Shabbos. But anyway. Okay. But it, it seems there, though, that anything associated with agriculture work would be pro prohibited, right? Even watering or all of that. The question yeah. is, can um, you stop it? The Elamaisa Rabbelezer Shleishim Shleishim by the Tananas was taught in the Mishnah. Ein noitin vein mavrichen vein markiven. The same uh, um, uh, items, the same things, the same activities. You can't plant, you can't layer, and you can't uh, graft. Erev shvius pachas min lamed yam lefnei Rosh Hashanah within thirty days before Rosh Hashanah. Vim nata, if you did, vehivrech vehirkev yakar, you have to uproot it because it's considered like you planted on on shmita because that's when it's going to take root. Rashi says to take out the words divrei Rabbi Eliezer. Okay. Although what the Gemara seems to be doing is saying that that would be the opinion of Rabbi Lazar. Rabbi Eliezer is an issue. It's Rabbi Lazar. Rabbi Eliezer is a friend of Rabbi Yeshua, student of Rabbi Yechim ben Zakkai. We were discussing a friend of Rabbi Meir, who's Rabbi Lazar ben Shemua. It's a different Rabbi Lazar. Um, Rabbi, uh, I'm sorry. Rabbi Yaisi, uh, is that, no, it's Rabbi Yehuda Aimer. Rabbi Yehuda Aimer. Kol Arkava, Shana Kiletes. The Gimel Yamim Shavena Kiletas. It has. It only takes three days. If it didn't, if it didn't attach, the graft didn't attach within three days. It's not attaching. That's how it works. Rabbi Yosi and Rabbi Shimon I remember Rabbi Yosi and Shimon say Shtei Shabbos is two weeks. Rabbi Rabbi Nachman Amar Rabbi Amar Rabbi Baravua. Rabbi Nachman says the name of his father-in-law. Rabbi Baravua. The Divrei Yomer Lamed. According to the opinion that says Lamed, that says thirty days. That's the Tanakama, which we're thinking is Rabbi Lozer. Tzarech Lamed Vishleishim. You need 30 plus 30. Why? 30 to take root and 30 because of Tzarech Lamed Vishleishim. Tzarech Lamed Vishleishim. According to the opinion that says it takes three days to take root or to, to, to graft, it takes three plus 30. Divrei Yomer Shabbos is Tzarech Lamed Shabbos is Vishleishim. According to one that says two weeks, it says two weeks plus 30. By the way, that's what uh, in Shulchan Aruch it says, if you plant a tree before two ba'av, so then it's considered a year for, uh, for Arla. Now, Tuba Av is not because of Tuba Av. It's not because, oh, it's a holiday. Tuba Av has to do with, because I need two weeks before Elul. And then I have Elul, which is 30 days. <laughs> you need 45 days, 44, 45 days. Okay. So what we're asking over here is that, who's, whose opinion is, is it that says that 30 days would be the year? It's not Reb Meir, because he says it's one day. It's not to Rebbe Lazar because he says it needs to be 60 days. So it says, and even if you're going to say that it's Rebbe Yudas, really, it's going to be 33 days. So whose opinion was the 30 days? The Gemara says, don't worry about it. It could be Rebbe Meir. And it's 30 days. When he said 30 days, that, meant, that didn't mean 30 for... Um, for Shemitah, that meant 30 to, to get absorbed into the ground, to, to take root. Then it should be 31. As what we just said is that Reb Meir really holds that one day is a year that we had from the par, and one day is a year. And he said 30 days before Rosh Hashanah, not because 30 days is a year. He said 30 days before Rosh Hashanah because it takes 30 days to take root. So we said, if that's the case, then it takes 31 days. It says, Rabbi, yeah. Right. I thought the whole thing about 30 days had to do with whether or not it was viable. We're talking about a baby, after 30 days. 
but that's not what not, not a not, okay. not a yeah there is that concept mm -hmm. there's that concept that has to do if it wasn't born in the uh full term so you wait 30 days to see if it's uh yeah, it was born in the eighth month. The, the, okay. So um, we say, mm -hmm. uh, So we say, mm -hmm. so we, say mm -hmm. we have our terrace that there is a 30th day that doesn't need to be complete. The 30th day could be counted as the day that you started the Kalim. Mm -hmm. The 30th day could be counted as, as a day where it takes one of the days of taking root. And it also is counted as a full year. It doesn't need to be an independent day. Could be one of the taking root days that day of taking root it takes root on the 30th day right so 30 days before rosh hashanah the 29th uh of elul is going to be the complete year it takes root in the morning and that's the year it doesn't have to be a solid day no uh, okay i'm rabbi yechanan rabbi yechanan says rabbi and rabbi lezer this is Rabbi Yechanan ben Nafcha, he is the Amira. Yeah. See, usually Rabbi Yechanan doesn't quote us Psukim. That's usually, uh, here we have Rabbi Yechanan quoting Psukim uh, that we had before. It says, Amatabah Mishmeh de Interesting. I guess I can't say he usually doesn't quote. We have two, twice in a row he's quoting Psukim. Rabbi Yechanan says, This is, um, talking about that a, a year is 30 days, a year is a day. It goes like this. It says, It's the 601st year. Okay, so the 601st year is the day of Rosh Hashanah. In the first month. On the first day of the month. Talking about Noyach. Talking about after the flood. Says he looks outside, and uh, or and the, the the land was dry. Yavshua Mayim uh, is he's able to um, to leave the teva. So, Reb Meir Savar mida kati yoy mechadu the ayel b'shana v'kakar le'shana shmamina yoy mechad b'shana chashav shana. The fact that it's one day into the year and you're already calling it the six hundred and first year, that means. That it's considered a year. One day is a year. See, the flood was when Nayach was 600. Now it's Tishrei, Aleph Tishrei. And we're saying it's the 601st year. You notice the words it says, Ba'achas v'sheish mi'ashana. What does the other opinion say that it takes 30 days? Ve'idach, Rabbi Lazar, he would say, Iksiv v'sheish mi'ayis v'achas shana k'da ka'amret. If it says 601, good. But when it says one in 600, then it's not 601. Uh, what was that? Seven in 20 blackbirds. <laughs> so, um, it's not, it's, <laughs> it's 600 years. And and the beginning of the first year, and the beginning of the next year, it's not six hundred and one years, it's one, one beginning, and six hundred years. Yeah, it says year uh, relates to six. Yes, right. Yes, referring to the six hundred. Yeah. You follow? That's uh, view. He's saying that it's not six hundred and one. It's six hundred years. It's not six hundred and one years. It's six hundred years. And one year is starting. So because the, the beginning of one year. Yeah, and it's it, not 601. So and because of the way it said one in 600, one in 600 years. So it's not saying 601 years. It's saying one in 600 years. And the one is talking about that we're starting another year. One and 600. Oh, yeah. It says one first. Yeah, they had this joke. They asked this uh, this child, asked his grandmother. He says, "How old are you?" So she says, "I'm 90." So he says, "Did you start from one?" But anyway, <laughs> it's a good joke. But it turns out she didn't. She started from zero. 
you know, you're not one when you're born, right? Okay. Um, for Rebbe Lazar, what's Rebbe Lazar's reason that it's 30 days? Blazer, my timer. Dixiv, the reason Be'echad Lachaydash. It says on the first, in the first of the month, Nida Akati Yaymechadhu, the Ayel Bechaydash, Vikakari Lechaydash, Shmamina Yaymechad Bechaydash, Chashav Chaydash. It says that it's in Berishain. The first month. Okay, it's the first month, and it's the first day of the month. Now, the fact that one day is already called a month, so what that tells me, we're going by, by in stages here. If one day is already called one day of the first month, it means it's called a month already, that means that one month would be called a year. Like there's units here, and the previous unit the lower unit is is considered a full. Uh, so, lamed yim b'shana chashim b'shana. Months go by the moon and sun, right? I don't know. What is that? Not oh, first. it's a different. Uh, yeah, it's a different system. Shmam yim mechad b'chaydesh chashav chaydesh. Mid yim mechad b'chaydesh chashav chaydesh. Lamed yim b'shana chashim b'shana. B'chaydesh leminuya b'shana leminuya. With the, the months go according to what, what counts it, and the years go by what counts it. What, ca- what makes up the year is a month. What? Okay. Now there's a, um, a parenthesis here that Rashi says, not to be Gary said. Okay, the following Gemara is a famous Gemara. Daniel, this has got to be your most favorite Gemara. <laughs> Tanya, start in a brisa. Rabbi Eliezer Aimer, Rabbi Eliezer says, B'tishrei nivra elam. The world was created in Tishrei. That's probably what we hold also because of all our tefillahs, right? Hayayim har Yeah, we're referring to, um, to Adam. B'tishrei yeah. noldo avis. In Tishrei, Avram Yitzchak and Yaakov were born. Uh, I have to delete um, the Yitzchak. Avram and Yaakov, because we're going to say that Yitzchak was born on Pesach. Uh, so Avram and Yaakov. Yeah. The Tishrei Mesu Avis. They passed away also in Tishrei. Avram and Yaakov, I guess. The Pesach Neilad Yitzchak. Yitzchak was born on Pesach. Yeah. That's this week's Parsha. It was baking, ma- yeah, the baking matzahs. Um, and a year later. For Rosh Hashanah Nifkada Sara Rachel Vachana. On Rosh Hashanah, Sarah, they were barren. Rachel was barren, Yaakov's wife, Rachel. And Chana, Elkanah's uh, Chana, uh, that's when they were remembered um, and they were, I don't know if they conceived or they were remembered, uh, they were answered. But Rosh Hashanah, Yatsi Yesim Beis Asurim. Huh? No, we're talking about Sar- Nifkada Sarah. No, Yitzchak was born on Pesach. That would have been six months. Uh, <laughs> I hear. It's interesting. It could be that they were remembered. There were they were. Later. Yeah. So when was Sarah remembered? The year before. And then on Pesach they arrived. The angels arrived. I guess. Rosh Hashanah Yatsi Yisim Beis Asurim. And Rosh Hashanah Yisim goes out of prison. Rosh Hashanah Batla Avaydim Avasinu B'Mitzrayim. The the hard work. The labor stopped on Rosh Hashanah. Now they were they were uh, let out of Egypt six months later, but uh, they didn't have to work in the middle of the plagues. Already it stopped. They said, "Okay, this is all over. This is." Uh... <laughs> um, Some want to explain that that's the pshat why on Rosh Hashanah in the uh, in the Kiddush we say Zecher Litzias Mitzrayim. The Ramban asks on Chumash, why do we say Zechel Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim on Shabbos? Shabbos has nothing to do with Mitzrayim. He quotes the Rambam in the Mer Nebuchim that says that it's because we had to work on Shabbos in Mitzrayim, and we got out, we were able to keep Shabbos. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's not Zechel Amai Sebrashis, not Zechel Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim, that's the Ramban in the Eschanan, 
anyway, but Rosh Hashanah, we have the answer. Six months, uh, we, they stopped working. Why are we saying Kiddush? Seich Litzin is Mitzrayim and Rosh Hashanah. Okay. Benisan Nigalu Betishrei Asibin Ligal. They were redeemed in Nisan from Egypt. But in Tishrei, uh, they're going to be redeemed in the future. It's basically, Rebbe Lezer is a Tishrei uh, enthusiast. Uh, Rabbi Yeshua, I'm a Rabbi Yeshua says, Benisan Nivra Elam. Rabbi Yeshua is a, is a Nisan enthusiast. He says that the world was created in Nisan. Benisan Naldo Avis. Even the Avis were born in Nisan. Benisan Mesu Avis. They passed away in Nisan. The Pesach Neilad Yitzchak. Yitzchak was born on Pesach. Rosh Hashanah Nifka Dasar Rachel Khan. Okay, they agreed to that. Rosh Hashanah Yatsi Yesim Besa Asurim. Rosh Hashanah is when Yesim went out of prison. Rosh Hashanah Batla Avaydam Yavisenu. The Mitzrayim, the work stopped on Rosh Hashanah. Benisan Nigalu, Benisan Asidin Ligal. They redeemed the Nisan, they'll be redeemed in the future in Nisan. Tanya, started in Abraisa. Rabbi Lezer, I'm a Minayan Shabbatishi Nivra Ilam. How do you know that the world was created in Tishrei? This is Rabbi Lezer's uh, view. Shinemar, as it says, Vayayimir Alekim Tachayarts Desha, Hashem said, let the earth give out its uh, um, herbs. The, the, uh, the, the grass. Zera, grass that gives forth seed. Eight pre. Eight pre is not just a fruit tree, but it's, eight, it's a tree that has fruits. When, which month does the earth give out its grass? Ve'ilan Mali Paris, and the tree is full of fruits. Avyam is a Tishrei. Tishrei, the tree has fruits. Well, he said, and I'll prove it. He says, that's the time when it, when it starts to rain. And the rain came and it, it sprouted. That the cloud came up from the earth. Okay, so he proves from eight pre that it was created in Tishrei. Rabbi Yeshua, I missed, I missed. Rabbi Yeshua, I missed. Rabbi Yeshua says, How do you know it was created in Nisan? The earth will give forth it's grass, Asim as Yazera, the it's Isapri. The earth gave gave forth. And it and uh, tree that gives fruit doesn't say tree of fruit. It says a tree that gives fruit. Now what's a month that there's grass on the ground, the Elon Mighty Paris, and the tree that will give fruit, not that it's full of fruit. Not Malaya pears, but that it will give fruit. Javier is in Nisan. You see, it's flowering in Nisan. This is when this is the mating season for the animals. Shinemar love Shukar Matsaini quotes the Pasuk and tell him that the sheep, where we just quoted this before, like two, two, three days ago. Now the Gemara asks, what does Rebbe Lezer do with the fact that it says that the tree will give forth fruit or gave, give, gives forth fruit? That's not saying that right now it will give forth, it will give forth in the future fruit. It's saying that it's a blessing that it will continue to give forth fruit. What about Rabbi Yeshua? It says a, a tree that has fruit. Who could Rabbi Shua ben Levi? That's following Rabbi Shua ben Levi. Rabbi Shua ben Levi was great in Agadita, the Gemara tells us. Rabbi Shua ben Levi, call my sabracious. Rabbi Shua ben Levi says, all of the act of creation is it Bikai Masa Nivru. They were created in full, in this full form. In other words, Adam wasn't a baby. Ladaitam Nivru, it was, they were asked that they want to be created. Yeah, I guess there was a conversation there. And Latsivyanim Nivru, they were created in the same form. Yeah. Yeah, this is created. I don't know. This is the first one. Shinemar Vayichula Hashemayim Vars Tuchal Tzvam. And it was completed, the heavens and the earth and all of its uh, hosts, everything that's there. Al Tikri Tzvam El Tziv Yainam. Not Tzvam, um, but Tziv Yainam means like one form. What did I see over here? Tziv Yainam. Taisva says means beautiful. Benoi. Okay, let's leave the Gemara over here.
Um, to, yeah, to, what, what, what's wrong with that? Why do they go after that? 